The Naira crashed against the dollar on Monday, falling to 1,030 Naira to the dollar on average in the parallel market, losing the momentum it gathered last week. Now, what this means is that there's been an 80 Naira loss or an 8.42% decline in the local currency compared to the 950, 950 Naira it closed the week at last Friday. Meanwhile, the Apex Bank Governor Olayemi Kadozo says the bank under his leadership was determined to make its impact felt by curtailing inflation. The former governor of the CBN, Mohamed Sanusi II, who was also uh, former governor of the Apex Bank, met with uh, Mr. Yemi Kadoso and expressed concerns about the inflation rates in the country, advising the CBN to work persistently at driving down the rates, which he noted had severely impacted the wealth of uh, individuals. Now, joining us to look at the fluctuating Naira and how the Nigerian economy is struggling to pick up is an ex-banker, LBS uh, MBN uh, economic analyst, Arinze Madweke. Good morning, Mr. Madweke. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, thanks for your time. I, I, I want to, you know, first of all, ask about, you know, certain, you know, there's some part of it that is confusing. Um, four days ago, the Naira, or maybe five days ago, the Naira was still at, a, you know, 1,150, maybe 1,200. And then, let's say a week ago, and then it starts to drop, right? It drops all the way down to about 910 or 920, I think, or 900. And then 24 hours later, it's back to 960, you know, back to 1,110, 1, 120, or 1,020, 1, whatever. Can you explain to Nigerians why or how this happens, and we're talking about in the space of two weeks, without necessarily anything tangible that, you know, we can see that the government may have done, to help with the, you know, with these rates? Well, um, that's the question a lot of people are asking. Um, for me, I've always maintained that um, what's happening in the market, that CBN needed to come out and state exactly what it did or what it didn't do. Um, because so, a lot of people have been given all sorts of reasons. Some said there was money that came in through a, a private cryptocurrency platform. Some said uh, CBN was paying off um, the futures commitments it had. And so all these things were affecting the market at that time. But again, I, I must stress that, yes, CBN did mention it was going to do it, but it, it didn't actually come out to say this is how much it had pushed in to pay off um, its obligations, and this was how much uh, was left to go, and so on. Um, which is where we have the issues where a lot of things that are being said are actually speculation. So some people also went ahead to also say it, it was part of the um, school fees paying period and that um, uh, that has eased as people have already collected what they need to send people to school. But I have an issue with that. My issue with that is historically we've not been seeing that effect. Let's call it Tuesday um, September effect on the exchange rate for years now. You know, as against what all of us know, which is the December effect on the um, exchange rate as people come in. So there's speculation all over the place. Um, I just feel CBN should come out and say, okay, this is what it, it added. This is what, because it has the full picture of everything that is going on. So I, too, am at loss as what I can just give you what people are speculating. All right. Let's talk about some of the policies that have been put in place. Just as the current administration came into the government, into office and announced the removal of subsidy, which was um, planned to be removed already by the previous administration. We know that also not too long after that, we had the policy of unification of the, you know, the market rate, allowing the Naira to float and allowing the market forces to determine what exactly the rates would be. If we go back in time and look at, you know, the moment the unification of these different, you know, markets happened, do you think that, that that was a good idea? Now, looking back in time, was it a good move? Well, it, it, I would even say it was not even a move. It was just an announcement, and I'll say why. When they made that announcement, they also said... 
they said they were floating. Then they said they were excluding um, 33 items from the market. I don't understand how you float and still have excluded um, 33, uh, 43. So where are those 43 items supposed to go? If you're going to ban them from being imported, that's fine. And then we know they are off completely. But when you say they can't go to the floated market, I don't understand. That means you're saying they can go elsewhere to buy, but they can't go to your own floated, open, you know, market to buy. So it didn't quite make sense. And immediately I realized that was the situation. I knew it was a non-announcement. So eventually they've come back and they've corrected that um, um, position. Now, as for floating or not floating, um, normally when you float, you're supposed to have a simulation of where the, the figure is going to drop. And you're also going to have um, some sort of commitment to defend it at that level, if that level is okay for you. So I, I really don't know what was going on, but what I can just say is that that announcement for me was a non-announcement once they had that 43 items excluded. Okay. So, you know, just to follow up on that question, some had also said that part of the steps that the government should have taken or that the CBN should have taken was to ensure that there was, you know, they pumped in FX into the economy as there was a backlog of FX. And that, you know, I'm making that announcement without ensuring that we had, you know, uh, enough FX in the, in the market to be able to get rid of the backlog we're experiencing at the time that was sort of putting the cart before the horse. Is that the position you agree with? Um, again, not really, because so let's let me give you an example. If they said, well, they want the exchange rate to be what a, a dollar to two thousand naira. Let's say they were ready to make our export products more pro, more competitive in the international market. That's an option, and so uh, paying off backlogs and so on might not really be an issue in that case. But what I'm, I'm, I was worried about was they didn't seem to be planning. They didn't seem to be an anticipation that, okay, this is where it's going to settle. For example, using the um, purchasing, pa purchasing power parity method to calculate where you think the Naira should settle. By the way, I think by calculations now, it's, it's calculated that the Naira should actually be about 800, maybe 900 just for people to know. So um, they would have done that calculation and said, okay, well, with all what we have and what we are owing, let's leave it to settle at 1,005 and come out and say, okay, this is what they're expecting and this is why they are floating. So um, that's what my own opinion that it, it, they, they needed to have come to tell the market this because people that float, actually say that they are going, they ex anticipate it to be at a particular level and they are ready to defend it at that level. And then they leave the market to play around. And when people, speculators try to move it upwards or downwards, then they now come in and defend it. I think um, central banks around the world have done this at a particular point in time when speculators have, you know, piled in on a particular currency and so on. So that's really what it was all about, stating where they felt the Naira was supposed to be at, and then now leave the market to handle it from there. Okay, well, um, from what it seems, it, it doesn't look very much like we have anything under control and, you know, like, and that the Naira will appreciate, um, you know, maybe back to 2014 levels. Um, by God's grace, it doesn't seem like that's likely to happen. And unfortunately, this affects, you know, the cost of living generally. It affects, affects the cost of petrol um, and affects the uh, price of goods across the country somehow, some way. So Nigerians likely are in for, you know, really, really, you know, long spell of all of this. But we'll bring you back again to have uh, further discussions, hopefully if um, things change drastically. Arinze Madwike, thank you very much for joining us. Okay, thank you too for having me. Absolutely.